Welfare checks and traffic stops are part of police routine, but what happens when cops come to an address and discover that a woman is keeping her husband as a hostage who pays her bills? And then we came outside and he was trying to leave. I told him he's not leaving, and that's when I got the knife and did that, and I told him. Or when they stop a vehicle and find out it's being driven by a sex offender with a car full of children. Why's your, why, why's your zipper, your button's down in your crotch? <laughs> well, I probably just forgot. Or when they accidentally discover a large amount of cocaine in a car. But before all that, something even worse. Prepare to see the fastest confession of murder ever. In December 2022, in Independence, Kentucky, the police were dispatched to conduct a welfare check. They knocked on the door of Tommy Powell and inquired about his girlfriend, Amberly Harris, who hadn't shown up for work for several days. Within just a few seconds, Tommy informed the officers that Amberly had passed away, and right after, he coldly admitted to shooting her. Is Amberly here? Amberly? She passed away. What? You did what? What? Is Amberly here? Amberly? She passed away. What? You did what? I can't read. I shot it. Okay, hold on, come here. Where is she? Don't you have to put your foot in the Where is she? Watching something. She's in the back. What? As you've seen upon the officer's arrival, Mr. Powell immediately confessed to killing his girlfriend Amberly and revealed she was inside the house. The police promptly took action to locate the body. The subsequent turn of events will leave you speechless. Independence police, make yourself known! 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 Go! Watch your footing. Watch your footing. We're in here, run. Huh? Clear. And the best police here is make something known! Make something known! Go. Watch, she's down. What? I got you she's down. Make sure you're watching where you're standing yes. and don't touch anything. Yes, sir. When? When did you do this? Yeah, just stay here. The police quickly found the body, which wasn't hidden, and began searching for the weapon used in the crime. Meanwhile, another officer was outside with Tommy and began questioning him to learn the details of the crime. Tommy immediately agreed to cooperate and revealed the location of the weapon. Rungi, you guys good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Tommy, I'm going to read you something real quick, okay? Miranda Wright. Yeah. You're the right to main sign. Anything you say can will be... It seems like Tommy knew very well what was coming for him. Turn, do you understand these rights, Tommy? All right. Is there anyone else inside? Is it just her? Oh, well, my pups. Okay, is it just Amberly? All right. Is it contained in there? When did all this just happen? Sunday night. Monday morning. Sunday. Monday morning. There's a gun in one of the rooms. Now, now the gun's out of the bed. On the bed? Right. Do you need a squad or anything to check you out? Alright, do you want to tell me what happened here? We're fighting. When were you guys fighting? Sunday morning. Sunday morning. What started the fight? Her crash my sh what was my it? I'm. So, what was it? She was selling my TV and stuff. Okay. And then what happened? I lost control. You what now? I lost control. Lost control. What made you lose control? I don't know. Are you okay? So when you say you lost control, what do you mean? Sure. What'd you shoot her with? 1019 or 1030. 20 gauge. 20 gauge? Go ahead. Alright, so is a shotgun you shot her with? Hey, I gotta get my body camera. Do you guys need anything from the office at this point? 
Do you know what today is right now? How long have you been inside the house for? Three or four days? Have you left the house or anything? Three to seven. There's no one else at the office. The officer suspects that the suspect is currently unaware of the situation, so he asks him several questions. You don't know what today is, though? Okay, one thirty-two, seven three. Do you know Hi. what month it is? Who's the president? Tommy's behavior and actions surrounding the crime are both disturbing and revealing. His instantaneous confession can suggest resignation, but also lack of remorse. He might have been expecting the police or someone to eventually find out, and he decided not to resist when confronted. Also, his calm and matter-of-fact demeanor might indicate a lack of empathy or remorse for his actions, which can be associated with certain personality disorders or sociopathic tendencies. Remaining in proximity to the deceased for several days is especially concerning. It indicates a severe detachment from reality or emotional numbing. It might be a result of shock, trauma, or an indication of a severe mental health issue. We'll tell you more about this later. But for now, let's take a look at what the investigators found in the house and the conclusions they drew. Chief, are you in here? Yeah. I'm coming through with the camera on to do a uh, walk through. Uh, there's a TV on the floor in the bedroom where this occurred. That's just, it looks like it may have been on a, like a, a shelf or whatever, it may have been knocked off. But other than that, you know, like it doesn't look like it's like destroyed, it just looks like it's been knocked off. The door does look like it's been kicked off the hinges. Yeah, make sure you move this around right here. And get whatever these are, because it looks like these pills might be everywhere. Uh, we're letting you know, we want to call Melissa. Just to help out once you start getting the system. I want to. Do you have a the, time frame of all this? One day between the bed and the. That's what we heard. He shot her Monday. He said. Well, I, I didn't see what this initial call was. A well-being check. Uh, Somebody else called about it. Yes. Okay. And yeah. <laughs> There's blood splatter on the wall, and she's covered up. Her face is covered up. Yeah, he covered her. her well, so it was something covered. Do the well-being check. The dude. He was here at the house. Like we opened the. He opened the door and said, "I shot." Her. The crime scene is a complete mess, with the aforementioned television, the weapon that was fired, and the body of the unfortunate individual. But did everything really unfold as Tommy told the police? The investigator noticed that the television looked as if someone had turned it over in a fight. The doors were torn off, things were scattered around. Everything points to the fact that the argument was violent and that Tommy truly snapped. He has now been taken to the police station so that the investigators can get as much information out of him as possible. Up to this point, we've seen that Tommy has indeed been very cooperative, but there is one crucial detail that he has kept from the police. I'm Detective Stride uh, with the Independence Police. This is Detective Young with Okay. I don't know anything, man. I was at home just kind of hanging out. Um, apparently, we got a call to your home that you looked up. What's going on? You shot your girlfriend? Okay. So, real quick, who who lives there? I don't believe it is. Who, whose name's on the lease? Mine. Your name's on the lease? Okay. okay. So, real quick, man. Um, do you mind if we search your residence? Kind of walk me through the process of how this kind of went through. Um, and before we kind of begin with that, um, we have officers that are at your house right now, okay? Uh, obviously, we need to be able to kind of process that scene effectively, and what will make that scene processing a little bit easier is if you take on this consent to search form and allow us access to search your own. Is that okay? Okay. So I'm going to walk this through with you real quick, okay? So how it works is that you're going to sign your name right here. You got the flu. What's going on, buddy? Talk to me. COVID. COVID? Okay. I don't know. Oh, so you haven't been to the doctor? Do you know where you are right now? Independence what? Sure. Okay. Do you want to go to the hospital so they can see what's going on with you? Please. Yeah, have you tried to communicate with anybody since Sunday, by any chance? No? Not like, like family members, any other friends, her friends perhaps? You haven't tried to talk to them at all? Okay. Everybody stand up. I'm going to take some pictures of you real quick against this wall. Real quick. We're going to try to be as quick as we can, okay? 
Do a favor, stand up, stand straight up this way, kind of look him. Please don't kick that over. He is talking about his puke. Tommy puked into a trash bin. Stand up against that wall for me. Before we conclude, I mentioned that Tommy withheld something from the investigators. Specifically, a month before the murder, the unfortunate Amberly had taken out a life insurance policy, which, in the event of her death, would pay out $20,000. The beneficiary of this insurance policy is none other than Tommy. He confessed everything in court and was sentenced to life in prison. Hey! Officer Volk, the Osseo Police Department. Who's I stop user? Speed. You want faster going? Nah, you want faster than that, man. Where are you coming from? Indiana? Alright. Is this your rental then, or what? Yours? You got your ID with you? Anything inside the vehicle I need to know about? What's that? No. Any marijuana? After this question, Eric's girlfriend, named Chavante, began to protest about why the officer was asking these questions. The couple was stopped after being observed driving at 90 miles per hour in a zone where the maximum speed limit is 70. The officer who initiated the traffic stop began asking questions when he noticed that the vehicle was a rental, because such vehicles are often used by convicted drug dealers to transport illegal substances unnoticed. Yep. Traffic stops lead into a lot of different oh, things, ma'am. Like, nope. Traffic saying. stops lead into a lot of different things. Okay. Yeah. Nope. You'd be surprised what we find out here. Well, I'll be back with you, alright? They were going 90. What's that? They were going 90. They were going 90? But they're saying that they're coming from Indiana, going back to the cities, but they have. They rented it at 10.58 p.m. on the 22nd, so like six hours ago. It has to be returned tonight by 9 p.m. back in Chicago. It appears that the vehicle was rented for a very short period, just enough time to deliver something. The officers are now becoming suspicious and are questioning the driver and the passenger. Is there anything on you, man? Guns, knives, anything? Mind if I pat you down? Come on down over here, man. Please, please. There you go. Alright. Are you on probation out of Minnesota? No, sir. No? I'm not were, on that. Were you on probation before? No, sir. No. What was the last time you got arrested? Uh, probably like a few months back or something like that. What was that for? Uh, I got arrested in a car in a vehicle with some guys, so. Alright. It was about like two, three months ago or something like that. Right. Probably two months ago. Alright. What did you get arrested for, though? Uh, being with somebody. I guess they was... That's not illegal. What did you get arrested for? I got arrested for being with somebody. It was like a, basically they was coming, somebody had a warrant and they was, like that's, he had a warrant for his arrest. Yeah. He was in the car with me, I was driving. And that's when I got pulled over, I got arrested. You know? What did they charge you for though? Uh, PC, um, weapons. Okay. Yeah. All right. What was the last time you got a drug charge? That you at least got charged? That was the same thing. Okay. That was, I guess it was paraphernalia in the vehicle when they, when okay. they towed the vehicle. Is there anything inside the vehicle tonight, man? Nah. If you got a little bit of weed or a pipe, I'll no, toss it. I but got, I don't have. Shit, bro. All right. I didn't lie to you about that. She just really just picked me up from Indiana. I would have flew, but this cost too much. Yeah. And I was trying to take the bus, but I still didn't have no way from Indiana to get to Chicago. Pretty much, the okay. mega bus is the cheapest. Shit, you know? Yeah. They don't have that up in Indiana. How'd you get down there? Say that again. How'd you get down there? Where to Indiana? Yeah. I drove down there. I drove with my brother to Indiana. This was a okay. while back, probably like a few weeks or something like that. All right. A week ago, two weeks ago. Did I do something wrong or something? Well, this is a little weird, man. What's a little weird? Like a, a rental that's supposed to be returned in the same city to go up, to go back. You don't know how long you've been down there. You, got, do. you have a pretty good you criminal history going on. She actually doing yeah. me a favor. She, why didn't she? Why didn't she just get you a one way and you go drive it to Minnesota and turn it in and be it, done? Bro, it costs seven hundred, eight hundred dollars to do a one way in that vehicle. Well, Believe me or not, they're gonna, costs, they're gonna. That's because they already factored the miles in. She's going back to <laughs> yeah. Chicago though. Yeah. With her dad now. They're no, that's why. Then they're gonna rack up the miles because you pay per mile. I'm pretty it's sure. Free, so. No, it's no? free mileage. I chose to drive here so okay. she could sleep because she got to drive back. You know? right. 
too long. And you're a convicted felon, right? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Yeah. I so. have been convicted 2010. Okay. Like I was a juvenile then. All right. So what was that for? It was for uh, aiding and abetting, basically. I want to say it's like murder, basically. Okay. But I was a juvenile, so All somebody right. died, basically. I went to jail. I was there. What's yours inside the vehicle right now? I can't hear you, bro. What's yours inside the vehicle? What do you mean? What's bags? What, what's yours? My duffel bag. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Does she have any bags? Uh, yeah. She got her backpack. All right. Do you have a problem if I search your bag? Say that again. Can I search your bag? Yeah, I'll say you can search it, but I would want to know why. Like, do you not believe me? No, I don't. It definitely seems that something is not right here, so it's no surprise that the officer doesn't believe Eric. As mentioned earlier, the vehicle was rented for only 24 hours and needs to be returned to the same city. Eric claims that he comes from a different direction where he went with his brother a few weeks ago and says that his girl rented the car and came to pick him up. It doesn't make sense for someone to travel such a distance in a rented car, yet Eric insists that it was the cheapest way. He has a criminal past related to drugs and has even been in prison. We've now reached the moment where the officer clearly reveals to Eric that he is indeed suspicious and that he will inspect his belongings in the car. But watch how he then began to make excuses. All right, well, if I give you my bag and search my bag, I can go by my way and stuff. Yeah, if you guys got nothing, you're going to be on your way. What do you mean, got nothing? It's nothing in the car. Bro. Guns, knives. That shit. Nothing in the car. Can I search the vehicle from bumper to bumper? Like I told you before, trying to make sure that everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, you know? All right, so he already gave me permission to search his bag. That's why I'm asking you, because you rented the vehicle and you're in the vehicle. All right. All right, so do you have a problem if I search the vehicle? I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Yeah, and I'm asking you because you you rented the vehicle and you're in the vehicle. Because from what I see on, on, the, on the interstate out here, it's not necessarily common to get a one, get a rental that's from Chicago and be driven up to the cities and return back to Chicago with his criminal history. Can I search your bag? Uh, no. All right. Hang tight. I'm no, going to go get I'm, my certified narcotics I'm canine. A, Stay I'm there. No, I'm going to get it, bro. I'm, I, look, nope. Good... Stay there. She's so, pissed, so that's, that's getting on her nerves. Fine. Like, you pissing her up, that's my girl, that's bro. Understand me. That's fine. Is you there know? anything inside the vehicle? No, sir. All right. Can I sit in there? No. Please. She ain't gonna get you. Yeah, but can I sit in there? There's a cage. She can't I know. Yeah. You'll be okay, man. Seriously, you'll be okay. There you go. Yeah, and anything on you inside the vehicle? No. No? Alright, then this is gonna be quick and easy, alright? I'll have you go step in front of my squad car here. I got a question. Yep. Is there a reason? Is, well, not is it a reason. The reason why we were separated. Can you guys just verify that for the video? Yep, it's because I have one seat. In he my only car, has one seat in his car, and so he's he here. Car? Yep. Yeah. I would like to be in this car then. No. There's nowhere to sit. Let's go. Okay. There's nowhere to sit. The dogs in, in the other car. What's oh, up? Please, bro. Please, I'll sit. I'll sit. Put me in that one. She just, can't just get you, bro. She's loud as shit in my ear. Yeah. I promise you. Just calm down, man. After placing them in police vehicles, the officer searched the car rented by Chavante. In the trunk, behind the left side paneling, he found over a kilo of cocaine, which would be worth about $100,000 on the street. Part of the paneling was even detached, so they didn't make much effort to hide the drugs well. Both were charged with manufacture intent to deliver cocaine, but they avoided punishment because the prosecutor, for some reason, dropped the charges. Finally, just take a look at how Eric reacted when they told him they had found the cocaine. Step on out. We're on your back. What's going on? What's going on? What's in the trunk? Because we found also what it looked like a bullet hole on the side of the car. She just rented the car, bro. So, what's in the trunk now that you found? Are you going to be straight up? Yep, probably about the kilo that was tucked back there. And you think I had that? You did have it. You were driving. It's in the car. You're right. I was driving. It was in the car. 
Pink. And here we are. This is where we're at, though. You guys are in possession of it. You're driving the car. All right. So you are under arrest for it, yes. What do you What do you have with you? Is it cocaine, fentanyl, or meth? Bro, you keep asking questions. You tell me what the f it is. Okay. Tell me what's going on. Quit asking me. It questions. was in the trunk. Well, tell it was behind. I need a lawyer for this. I need a lawyer to, to be able to talk okay. on my behalf. Okay. You're under arrest. You're going to be going to jail. Hi, what's going on? Nothing. We're good. I'm getting my kids ready for school. They're going to be late, so I got to get them ready first. Well, what was going on though? Nothing's like... going on. I'm getting my kids ready for school. Well, somebody called 911 here and there was yelling and screaming. Um, we're getting our kids ready for school. They're, we're literally getting ready for okay. school. They're going to be late. And I'm, I'm in underwear, so... Right, and we're investigating a crime. So There's who are no crime you? crime here. Who are you? Um, you need to stop. I'm Step getting... out of the house. Stop. Step out of the house stop talking right me. now. My kids are right here. I'm not doing anything. Step out of the house now. Step out of the house now. Stop touching me! Look, I'm right here! Why is he touching me? Stop touching me! We are investigating a domestic violence call. What's going on? Then talk to us and let us know. Who else is in the house? Just me and the kids and my husband. Leave me alone. Yeah. Stop touching me! Here's the situation. Look what he's doing. You're not cooperating. I told you. You're behind the wall. We can't see your I'm in my underwear! Okay. So then you can Turn around, put your hands behind your no, back. No, stop! Leave me alone! I'm pregnant! Why are you touching me? Look what he's doing to me! Very easy, just cooperate. Okay, talk to stop! Be aggressive and touching me! Okay, we will. What's going on? Come here. No! Okay. These are my Step kids! Step outside. Okay, Come here. That's fine, but these are my kids! They're my, this is Come my here. house! We're not cooperating. We got a call. We're investigating. That's fine, and right. there's nothing Who wrong! Who else is in the house? all over your face. I'm no, no, I don't! Leave me alone! You and your niños? Yes, you do. Yes, these are my, this is my family! Leave me alone! Stop! Stop, stop touching me! Stop! Okay, well stop touching me! Sorry, stop! Down. My kids are right there! Leave calm me alone! Calm down! Calm down! I'm gonna sue you! Calm That's down! That's what I'm gonna do! What's going on? Okay, have... I will touch you if you leave me alone! Just have... stop being aggressive on me! You have signs of injury on your face! That's fine! You got a 911 call! Okay, so, so stop! So obviously there's Look something going on! Look at my kids are watching! Please stop! Because you were doing something in the house! No, I wasn't! I was getting my kids ready for school! I so just what's told going you! On okay, then? leave me alone! I will talk to you! Someone on the phone claimed that a husband and wife were fighting loudly in Spanish. When police receive a report of domestic violence, they have a duty to investigate to ensure the safety of all parties involved. In such cases, when police have a reasonable belief that someone inside is in imminent danger, officers do not need a warrant to enter a residence. But immediately pulling someone out of their home, especially when they are not fully clothed, raises issues of personal dignity and privacy. But we still don't know anything particular yet, so let's move on. Step, step out. No! Step Stop out. touching me! I'm not even in the clothes! Step out here, just follow Bye. directions, that's it. This is a private property! Why are you guys in my house? Somebody called 911 from here. There was a discussion over, give me some papers, give me this, give me that. So what is going on? You have a scratch on your this face. This is not from today though, sir. We this literally just got a call. Yes, I understand you guys got a call, but this is not from who today called? though. I'm not sure who. It's early in the morning, I just woke up. I don't know who called. I'm not watching my neighbor, sir. I don't know. While the woman was giving her statement, her husband was talking to another police officer. He revealed that he was a victim of domestic violence and that his wife had beaten him that morning before the police arrived. She also slashed the tires and windows of his vehicle with a knife when he said he was leaving. You took a knife to this window trying to crack it to force him to give you the papers. Do you see what I see here? Yes, but after he scratched me. No, you don't know what happened here. You don't so, understand. So tell us. So tell us. That's asking, what I'm telling you. Yeah, so tell me. Yeah, you're just seeing what he said. Right. We woke up and I, I told him since yesterday. I was going to let him use her. But he, he doesn't put a ride for her. So I told him this morning, I need my papers before you leave. Because I'm going to file taxes. And he refused. And he was getting me and shaking me. And so I had to get him down to the couch. Because that was the only way to get out from him. And I'm scratching. I told him, if you don't stop, I'm going to call the cops. Okay, and no then we came that. outside and he was trying to leave. And I told him, you're not leaving. And that's when I got the knife and did that. And I told him. He's saying that you do this constantly. You take advantage of him because he's illegal. He doesn't have standing in this country. And you threaten him. He's the one that dialed 911. I just confirmed. 
He dialed 911. He's fed up with the situation. He said he provides, he pays rent here, he not provides the for time. the girl, he provides even for the kid that's not his, she takes all his cash, he has no standing, yeah, can't pay checks, right can't pay any of that, that's a has lie. no proof, has some con he's fed up with it, he's fed up with the he situation. He does not pay everything. He's always been afraid to call 911 because her English is better and feels that he's the one that would no, be that arrested. Can you let her talk about please? So he goes inside, argues, she says no, 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 continues to argue, <clears throat> goes from zero to a hundred about these papers. <clears throat> so he's like, look, it's my girl, I provide for her, I pay your rent here, just let me go. It's, Not all the it's, time. It's my money. So I'm going to arrest you for domestic violence, criminal damage, and disorderly conduct. Um, I'll make it as quick as I can so you can get back <laughs> here. Okay, but I don't think that's fair though. It doesn't matter what you think is fair or yeah, not. Yeah, but he started of, first though. I understand. Like I understand, but the state of Arizona says if we have probable cause to believe a crime occurred, that he's not eligible to be with the kid by himself. Okay, so who is? I'm not. I don't have anybody. Okay, then we're gonna have to take them to DCS custody. That that's that's our only option. Why can't he go and I stay with the kids? If if. They're because right. I have probable cause to believe that you damaged his truck for no reason. There's there no reason for you to go out there and start damaging his, his window. I think he should go. Because if it was, it was he the one who started you it. You are going to go. If he started, if you're defending yourself, if he's defending, I, I don't right, know. Right, right. But what I do know is there, you had no reason to go out there and stab his windows and stuff because tire. you wanted, or his tire, because you wanted, wanted the paperwork from him. You know what I'm saying? According to the victim's statement, he is illegally residing in the USA. His partner exploited this by taking his papers and blackmailing him to stay with her and work illegally to support her family. He tried to escape from her several times, but she did not allow him to leave and would even resort to physical violence. On that day, she even took a knife forcing him to call the cops. She will now be arrested, and upon arriving at the jail, her true nature quickly becomes evident. Huh? Is that Samantha? Yes. Can I get it? Can you stand on your phone? Mm -hmm. Uh, please. It's not an option. I'm not doing a photo. You have to. Samantha. I'm not. I'm not. No, I don't want my picture on there. Wait for me again. I Stop will charge you. Stop touching me! I'm charging you with a felony for resisting. Stop! I'm not doing Stand your up. picture. Leave me alone now. Take a picture. Leave me alone. You don't have the right to touch me. Stop touching me. I'm praying you leave me alone. Samantha was charged with disorderly conduct and criminal damage. And now, something that will send chills down your spine. During a routine patrol, the New Mexico State Police pulled over a vehicle that was swerving on the road. To the officer's shock, the driver was 41-year-old Jeremy Guthrie, an accused sex offender. Inside the vehicle were six minors aged 13 and 14. The officer immediately suspected Guthrie was under the influence of alcohol, and he emerged from the vehicle with his pants unbuttoned. Hey there. Hello. How are you? All right. Just all right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Should you have a license? Yeah. There's a wall right there between your legs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. 
a little bit nervous. So was I, the way you're driving? Huh? I said, you mentioned that you were nervous, right? I was nervous while I was behind you driving down I-40. You were in lane number one at times. You went away from lane number one all the way over. Didn't use a signal, had problems keeping the, your, 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 your vehicle one lane. And then when you merge on from uh, westbound 40 to northbound 25, you took that curve way too fast. I did. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm I thought you were going to crash. No, I don't. I didn't say. I don't think so. I'm just saying I thought you were going to crash. And then you have a bunch of kids in the car. How many kids? You have one, two, three, four, five, six. Who are these kids to you? Uh, this is just my friend. That's your friend? Yeah. How old is your friend? 18. That girl's not 18? Huh? That girl's not 18? Yeah. No, she's not. That girl's not 18, trust me. She don't look 18. Ma'am, how old are you? I didn't ask you your name, I asked you how old, how old you were. Jeremy, turn the car off and come back here and talk to me. All right. Let me see the keys. Thank you. Come on out. Why is your why, why is your zipper your buttons down in your crotch? <laughs> well, I probably just forgot. Okay. I'll button my zipper. Right? Yeah, please button your zipper. Yeah. I mean, I had to I had to take it like a, a piss and. Um... When did you last drink? Like, probably, um, it's been, a, it's been a little while. Like, an hour? I would say it's more than an hour. Yeah, like, than, maybe two? Yeah. R roughly? Like, okay. Like, two hours. Like That's fair. Because, you know, two hours is totally, is, is totally different than, no, I haven't been drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, it's uh, okay. No, it's okay. We're not, we're not going to argue I about mean, it. Uh, I mean, I know what I smell. I know what I hear. I know what I see. Okay, simple as that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. Well, you already did. You said I hadn't been drinking. And then I kind of played you, said, was it an hour ago? Like, no, longer. Two hours, yeah. It's been a few hours. Okay. I mean, uh, gotcha. Well, I mean, we're not gonna argue about that. I mean, I know what I smell. Okay. Do you think you're safe to drive? Do you think you're safe to drive? Yeah. You do? Absolutely. Once again, you and I will disagree on that too. I don't think you're safe to drive. Just based on, just based on, on, on how you're driving. Jeremy showing signs of alcohol impairment, such as swerving on the road, slurred speech, and having the smell of alcohol on his breath, suggests DUI. Having six minors in the vehicle while driving under the influence significantly escalates the severity of the offense. This could lead to charges of child endangerment. Jeremy is visibly distressed, and for a very good reason. The police officer begins to question the children in the vehicle, and they soon admit that none of them are of legal age. The conclusion of this story is more than chilling. All those people in the car, who are they? They're just my friends. I, don't, I mean... Do you normally hang out with people who, who are young? Not... not how, uh, how old are you? I'm 41. 41? Okay. Hang tight right there, okay? How old are you? And don't lie to me. I'm, okay, like, I'm not gonna play this, the game where you lie. I know that... I know that you're not 18, okay? So if you want to have attitude, you in the front, okay? We go about it another way. Simple as that. So if, so if I sense any attitude or you give me lip, we'll do it another way. Okay, how old are you? 14. 14, thank you. Simple, simple question. 14. Four, really 14? Yes, sir. Okay. 14. 14. Okay. 13. Okay. 13, okay. 14. Okay, who is this guy to anybody? Yeah, that's our homies. And then she knows his kid. Okay. So, 
That there's your homie? Or, okay, so you, got, you, you guys all need to call your parents. Yes, sir. Just so you guys know, okay, I probably saved six lives tonight, at least six lives. Okay, I thought you guys were going to crash around that bend. He's, he's going way too fast. And he's definitely not safe to drive. So just to make sure that you're okay to drive, okay, uh, would you mind uh, doing a couple of field sobriety tests just to make sure? Yeah. Yeah? You would mind or would, or you, you would want to do them? What's it? Uh, you do you would, mind, you or or do you, or would you want to do them? Do you want to do them? Yes or no? I don't really want to. You don't want to do them? No. I don't want to. Okay, I'll, I'm just gonna let you know if you don't do the test, I'm gonna have to place you under arrest. You want to turn around? You want to turn around? All right. So you're gonna be placed under arrest for DWI, okay? Jeremy was arrested and charged with DUI and six counts of child abuse. He was later also charged with multiple counts of rape. He started a relationship with one of the girls from his vehicle when she was only 12.